Job 40 and 41 today, we are going to finish Job's, uh, excuse me, God's conversation with Job. So here we go, starting with Job 40. The Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? And can you voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at every proud man and bring him low. Look at every proud man and humble him. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. That Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Look at the behemoth which I made along with you and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength he has in his loins. What power in the muscles of his belly. His tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are close-knit. His bones are like tubes of bronze, his limbs like rods of iron. He ranks first among the works of God, yet his maker can approach him with his sword. The hills bring him their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plant he lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal them in their shadows. The poplars by the stream surround him. When the river rages, he is not alarmed. He is secure. Though the Jordan should surge against his mouth, can anyone capture him by the eyes or trap him and pierce his nose? 41. Can you pull in the Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he keep begging for mercy, you for mercy? Will he speak to you with gentle words? Will he make an agreement with you for you to take him as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of him like a bird or put him on a leash for your girls? Will traders barter for him? Will they divide him up among the merchants? Can you fill his hide with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? If you lay a hand on him, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of subduing him is false. The mere sight of him is overpowering. No one is fierce enough to rouse him. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. I will not fail to speak of his limbs, his strength and his graceful form. Who can strip off his outer coat? Who would approach him with a bridle? Who dares open the doors of his mouth, ringed with his fearsome teeth? His back has rows of shields tightly sealed together each so close to the next that no air can pass through. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. His snorting throws out flashes of light. His eyes are like rays of the dawn. Firebrands stream from his mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from his nostril as from a boiling pot over a fire of reeds. His breath sets coal ablaze, and flames dart from his mouth. Strength resides in his neck. Dismay goes before him. 
The folds of his flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. His chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. When he rises up, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before his thrashing. The sword that reaches him has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart or the javelin. Iron he treats like straw and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make him flee. Sling stones are like chaff to him. A club seems to him but a piece of straw. He laughs at the rattling of a lance. His undersides are jagged potsherds, leaving a trail in the mud like threshing sledge. He makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. Behind him, he leaves a glistening wake. One would think the deep had white hair. Nothing on earth is his equal, a creature without fear. He looks down on all that are haughty. He is king over all that are proud. God bless the reading and hearing of his words. Amen.